guys welcome to another long-awaited weekly mesh we definitely have missed you guys we have and i hope you've missed us we hope so <laughs> um david uh, this week went and visited mccashin's brewery in nelson and Ooh, nice. yeah and they talked about um how they started out and just everything happening in and they're nelson. quite a big brewery now Exactly. They make some nice beer. They make Stoke. Yum. The Stoke brand, Stoke mm -hmm. Handler, Stoke Pilsner. Very good beer. So. And also started sort of humble, humble beginnings. Yeah. No, and now, definitely. um, one of the you know best craft breweries in New Zealand. So let's see what they have to say. Hi, I'm here with Rob from Macashins. We're just here to talk about the uh, the brewery and some of the beers that you do. And if you could just tell us a little bit about the brewery. Okay, well the brewery itself was established originally on the old Rochdale Cider site in Stoke. Um, back in 1981, Terry and uh, Bev McCashin bought the site and uh, set it up as a brewery. So the first craft brewery in New Zealand since uh, I guess the late 60s when DB and Lyon took over a lot of the smaller breweries. Since then it's grown from strength to strength and had some uh, rather interesting times between uh, growing the brands of uh, Max Real Ale, Black Mac, Max Gold um, subsequently selling those brands to Lion um, 10 or 12 years ago. Um, the plant was then decommissioned as, uh, as Lion grew the brands and uh, moved them elsewhere and then the McCashin family reopened the plant uh, around about six years ago and recommissioned everything and uh, moved, uh, moved on with uh, the Stokes brand. So rather than uh, rather than the Max brands, which are now owned by Lion, we now brew the uh, the Stoke brand under our own uh, label. Plus, we do uh, some contract brewing for others. Yeah. Um, so one of the beers we were particularly interested in speaking to you about was uh, the Two Stoke, the low ABV. Yes. Um, quite interesting from a homebrew perspective, because it's quite a difficult beer to brew, really, because there's so much balancing going on. Right. I mean, do you find there's quite a, a lot of considerations when you're making a beer like that? Yeah, the uh, the two stoke is an awkward one. It's uh, it's essentially a blend of uh, one of our proprietary higher alcohol beers with a uh, what we refer to as a cutting liquor. So we take wort and um, a certain amount of water, and then we brew them through the brew house with additional hops and so forth to give it a distinct character. But the the, the trick with any beer like that is to uh, make it in such a way that it doesn't lose the body of a full strength beer. So it's not too not too watery, but at the same time we don't add up add too much wort and get a, a very strong worky character into the finished beer. Yeah. So hence we we do it as a blend. Um, we add additional hops to it and try and get that that nice flavour balance so that it's as I say neither too too thin and watery and equally not too uh, not too worky because the worky character is not necessarily a, a a good one for a finished beer. Yeah, yeah. Do you find there's like a growing demand for lower ABV beers? Yeah, and we're we're developing not just uh, the low ABV, but obviously there's been quite a uh, swing towards the mid strengths around the three, three and a half percent, and the uh, the sessionable beers um, in that four to four point three percent region. So traditionally, craft beers have tended to be higher alcohol. Um, particularly with some of the IPAs and APAs yeah. and so forth, a lot of them are big grunty beers. Um, but there does seem to be a trend moving back towards something, particularly with the drink drive laws and so forth, towards something you can have more than just one of and still be able to go home without a taxi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you find to be your most popular beer then in the range? Um, our Stoke Amber would be the uh, the biggest one that we produce under our own brand. Um, the, the IPA and the Gold are also popular. Um, Pilsen is a growth area for us as well, but it's it's not quite as popular as those other ones. Yeah. And do you find that the beers you're brewing are kind of heavily influenced by what consumers are asking for, and or do you find that you kind of decide on something and put it out? And that's yeah, the, it's it's a, a combination of the two. We we're obviously uh, acutely aware of what's happening in the marketplace um, via various research organisations and just I guess gut feel when we're uh, when we're talking to people in the market. Um, and we try and brew something that uh, is going to meet that consumer demand. Um, there is always an element of a brewery pushing a product out and saying, we think this is going to be nice, we yeah. think you're going to like this product. Mm -hmm. um, but equally, we, uh, we also listen and re respond to the pull from the marketplace in mm -hmm. terms of 
we want a, a, a sessionable pale ale or we want a really gutsy American pale ale yeah. or, or a Pilsner or whatever it happens to be. So there's a combination of both. Yeah. You know, we, uh, we're always looking at new product development and what we can do to, uh, to improve our product range. Mm -hmm. Let's, thank you very much. Yeah. You're welcome. That was really cool. Oh, that was nice. I am really, really impressed because with those, you know, with the higher alcohol um, craft beers, you tend to sort of only have one or two. I have 18. No. <laughs> but um, with this sort of lower alcohol um, beers, it can actually give you a good opportunity just to make a session out of it yeah. and have a few more and still be okay. So I'm really impressed and it's a good um, change, I think. Yep. You say so. so. How, how would if, I... if you say so, I don't know if I see you. No, no, no. It's it is it is true. If yeah. you're um, certainly if you're driving, yeah. it's nice. You can uh -huh. still have beer and do it. So. And how do you reckon in the grandfather could that you know could, we could maybe achieve that? We've got a session so ale. So we've got a session ale, but your general session ales are about four and a half percent. Um. So here we're talking about you can even go smaller than that. And certainly if you're driving, if you want something, that's maybe 3%. Yeah. Um, you can get the micro pipe work mm -hmm. smaller. So it's like our, you, when you buy a grandfather, you get your standard pipe work, telescopic pipe work. Yeah. Um, and this is just a smaller version of that, which allows you to make um, grain bills that are so under 4 kgs. Yeah. So 3 kgs, 2.5 kgs, and that gives you a beer that's about 2.5%, 2, 2 which is like half a session. Cool. Ale, yeah. Maybe for a Wednesday night, you know, half a session, not a, like a, a Wednesday night. I don't, yeah. know. I don't know if there's any night that suits that, but no, no, no that's it's it's good. So, yeah. yeah, it's it's nice to experiment like that. Exactly. So. And let us know how you guys get on and with cool. your experiments. We'd love to hear from you. Check us up on Facebook. And it's and good to be back. Yeah, and yeah. many more to come. Cheers. Happy brewing. <laughs>